Brad Witt from Woodhaven. Welcome to our Frame and Panel Secrets video. Today we're going to show you how to make this hallmark of fine craftsmanship. Illustrating basic design principles plus useful jigs, tips, and tricks. So let's get started. A frame and panel door is constructed of five parts. Two styles, two rails, and a panel. Styles are the vertical parts that run top to bottom, and rails are the horizontal parts that fit between the styles. The panel fits in a groove in the styles and rails, filling the area between them. The panel can be solid wood, plywood, glass, or practically anything you want. We'll go through the tooling and steps necessary to make a 14 inch wide by 18 inch tall cathedral raised panel door. Our standard door templates include 10 two-piece matching rail and panel templates for 5 to 18 inch parts, with an optional template set available for 18 to 20 inch parts. These templates are 3 8 inch thick for maximum support of a flush trim bit in a router table. Our standard door templates can be used with our patented frame and panel master or by themselves with our exclusive indexing fences. Our heavy duty door templates work for 6 to 20 inch parts and are 18 millimeter thick for maximum support of a shaper bearing. They're designed to be used exclusively with our heavy duty frame master and heavy duty panel master. Two-piece cope and pattern sets consist of separate cope and pattern bits and are the most popular style. However, one-piece reversible bits are available. The pattern cut is made on the edge of all the rails and styles. The cope cut is made on the ends of the rails and mates with the pattern cut in the styles. Run these bits at full speed in a one and a half horsepower or larger router and make the cut in one pass. If you notice burning, you're feeding too slow. Tear out means you're feeding too fast or the bit is dull. Most tear out occurs during pattern cutting. Because of that, I like to make my pattern cut first on stock as long as possible so I can remove any bad spots. However, you may prefer to make the cope cuts first. The height setting for a pattern bit is usually 3 8 inch, measured from the face of the stock to the start of the panel groove. This corresponds to the 3 8 inch cutting depth of most panel bits. That means that the face of the panel and frame will be flush to each other. The finished width of our straight rail and styles are two and a quarter inches and our cathedral rail is four inches, but you can make them narrower if you prefer. Instead of using three quarter inch thick stock, I prefer 13 16 thick stock. This extra sixteenth inch means the rear tongue of the frame will be 50% thicker and stronger. There are two ways to figure the rail length required. One method uses math and requires the following calculations. Take the finished door width of 14 inches and subtract 3 and 3 quarter inch to find a rail length of 10 and a quarter inches. You may want to cut to cathedral or arched rails one inch longer if you wish to attach a template to them with screws. The second method requires two sample styles with the pattern cut in them and a tape measure. Place the styles with their smooth edges back to back. Lay your tape across the styles with the 14 inch tape mark, your door width, lined up with the edge of the unmachined face of the style, opposite the end of the tape. Read the tape measurement at the same place on the opposite style, nearest the end of the tape. That tape reading at that point Ten and a quarter inches is the rail length needed. Cut the styles to the 18 inch height of the door or slightly longer if trimming them after assembly. After cutting the cathedral rail to length and ripping it four and an eighth inches wide, mark a center line on the joined edge of the rail. If using the door template alone, adjust the indexing fences to center and index the template to the rail, then outline the shape on the rail and remove the waste. If using the door template with our frame and panel master, center the rail under the template 
then outline the shape on the rail and remove the waste. Tear out tends to occur on the outfeed side of the rail curve, so climb cut this half of the rail if necessary. If using our door templates alone, tape the template to the rail. You can also screw the template to the rail if you cut the rail one inch longer. Machine the rail profile with a flush trim bit. If using our door templates with our heavy duty frame master, reinstall the rail in the jig and machine the finished shape with a pattern cutter on your shaper. Woodhaven offers a complete range of coping sleds with 500 pound toggle clamps. There are two ways to use a coping sled. One method is to slide the sled against your router fence and not use the miter slot in the table. This is easier and faster to set up, but the sled can be pushed away from the fence, necessitating a second pass. Also, the bit may cut slightly into the coping sled, but not enough to ruin it. The other method uses the miter slot in your router table. This is more tedious to set up as the fence has to be parallel with the miter slot for the sled to track without binding, but this can be eliminated with simple setup sticks. After making the pattern cut in all the straight stock, make the pattern cut in the cathedral rail with the same bit setup. You can also use the frame and panel master to safely hold the cathedral rail and make the pattern cut, but make sure the bearing rides firmly on the template. Cut the straight rail to length and set up the coping bit. To prevent tear out as the bit exits the work, you'll need a backer for your coping sled. If the pattern cut is made first, you'll need two backers, a smooth backer made of quarter inch masonite and a coped backer made of three quarter inch stock, both as long as your longest rail. Make the cope cut with the patterned edge of the rail inserted in the coped backer. Make the opposite cope cut with the smooth backer between the work and the coped backer. If you make the cope cuts first, you'll need a 3 quarter inch thick backer as long as your longest rail. There are some dimensions to consider when making raised panels. Raised panel bits usually cut a 3 8 inch high profile, measured from the face of the tongue to the panel face. This corresponds to the 3 8 inch height setting of most cope and pattern bits. These bits also cut a 1 1⁄4 quarter inch to 1 1⁄2 inch wide profile. When assembled, the face of the panel and frame will be flush to each other. The panel length is figured in the same way as the rail length, then deduct 1 8 inch. For our 18 inch tall door, that dimension is 14 and a quarter inches. Even though we want a finished panel length of 14 and 1 8 inches, We'll cut the cathedral panel to 14 and a quarter inches and remove 1 8 inch later when we machine the panel profile. The panel width is the same as the rail length, less an allowance for seasonal wood movement across the grain. The rule of thumb is to allow the panel to expand and contract 1 8 inch per 12 inches of width, but this varies with the time of year you're building it. During summer, at high humidity, the wood may have swelled to its maximum so you can deduct 1 16th inch or less. During winter, at low humidity, the wood may have shrunk to its minimum, so you must deduct at least 1 8th inch. We'll rip the panel for our door 10 and 8th inches wide. It's important for the panel to have a flat tongue to allow for wood movement. The tongue thickness is usually 1 quarter inch, which corresponds to the width of the groove made by the pattern bit. Panel thickness affects whether the panel can be machined in one or two setups. 5 8 inch thick panels require only one setup to machine the face of the panel. Thicker panels require a second operation to make a back cut on the back of the panel. Mark a center line on the panel face about 4 inches down from the top of the panel. Near the top of the panel, Mark the finished panel length, 14 and an eighth inches, on that same center line. If using the door template alone, adjust the indexing fences to center the template on the panel. 
Position the template on the 14 and an eighth inch mark. Outline the shape on the panel and remove the waste. If using the door template with our frame and panel master, center the panel under the template. Position the template on the 14 and an eighth inch mark. Outline the shape on the panel and remove the waste. If using our door templates alone, tape the template to the panel and machine the finished shape with a flush trim bit. If using the door template with our frame and panel master, reinstall the panel and machine the finished shape with a flush trim bit. You can also use the frame and panel master to hold the part and machine the raised panel profile. If using our door templates with our heavy duty panel master, reinstall the panel in the jig and machine the finished shape with a pattern cutter on your shaper. There are two styles of raised panel bits, horizontal and vertical. No matter which type you're using, cut the panels in three to five heavy passes and one light finish pass. If you notice burning, you're feeding too slow. Chipping or tear out means you're feeding too fast or the bit is dull. Horizontal bits will cut cathedral panels but require a three horse variable speed router set at 8 to 10,000 RPM. Vertical bits will not cut cathedral panels. They require a one and a half to two and a quarter horsepower router and are run at full speed. In addition, you'll need a taller subfence for your router fence or use a horizontal table. Depending on your panel style, incremental passes can be made by either raising the bit or moving the fence. For straight panels, set the fence at the finished position and make the cuts by incrementally raising the bit. Or set the bit at its full height and move the fence back incrementally. For cathedral panels, you must raise the bit incrementally. Set your router fence back enough to compensate for the rise of the panel. Start each pass on the end grain of the panel rotating it 90 degrees until all sides are cut. Then repeat until the full profile is cut. Back cutting is necessary if your stock is thicker than 5 eighths of an inch. Some horizontal bits come with back cutters, but I don't like sandwiching stock between them. Also, this type of bit doesn't allow you to incrementally raise it unless the back cutter is removable. A safer and easier way to make a back cut is to use a portion of the same raised panel bit you just used. Sand the panel faces and raised panel profiles. To avoid a line showing up as the panel shrinks, pre-stain and apply one coat of finish to the panel before assembly. Dry fit the parts and check your assembly. Apply glue to one end of the cathedral rail and attach it to one of the styles. Slide the panel in the rail and style, then glue and attach the opposite rail and style. Clamp and check for square by measuring diagonally each way. A Copen pattern joint is very strong due to its large glue surface area. However, if you'll be hanging heavy objects on them, they may require additional reinforcement. Dowels or screws are excellent ways to reinforce the joint. Keep in mind any decorative profile you'll be cutting on the outside of the door to make sure it won't cause any problems. One method to prevent panel rattle is to insert some foam strips in the groove during assembly. Another method is to pin the panel after assembly using a Wonder Brad. It's a thin, hardened, headless brad that can be driven in through the back tongue of the rails without pre-drilling. Center the panel, install the Wonder Brad, then strike it sideways and it breaks off just below the surface. Route any decorative edge profiles on the outside of the door, sand and finish to suit.
Glass panels may eventually need to be replaced, so you'll need to remove the back tongue of the frame after assembly with a raveting bit. You could also remove the back tongue of your rails prior to assembly. The bearing on the raveting bit should ride against the profiled edge of the frame. Be careful not to press too hard or you might distort the edge. You'll be left with radius inside corners which you'll need to square up with the chisel. We hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned some useful tips and techniques. Keep us in mind for your future woodworking needs and thanks for watching.